Okay, this is an if and only if proof. It says the dot product is zero if and only if u and v are orthogonal, which means it can go backwards also. If u and v are orthogonal, the dot product will be zero. So we're proving this way, given the left-hand side. We want to prove the right-hand side. So looking at the alternate dot product, if the dot product is zero, then we have, and we assume these vectors are not zero, so therefore, which implies theta is 90 degrees or pi over 2. So that's proven. Going the other direction. Okay, pretty much the same proof, just going backwards. So normally, we'll have a middle term here, the 2u dot v. So basically, this is true if the dot product's 0. And if we have this, then the dot product 0. So it works both ways. Before we get started, I want us to recall. So we showed that on the last video. Pretty simple to show. I'm going to actually start this way. So given the dot product is 0, I want to prove the left-hand side. So I'm going to start with the left-hand side of this equals, and we'll transform it to the right. Well, we can use our given right here. This is 0. And going the other direction. In order for these to be the same, this would have to be 0. They are like shadows of one vector cast onto another. So let me draw a picture of this. Here's vector v, and we're going to cast vector u onto v. So this is our projection of u onto v. The shadow is the projection. So here's the math of it. We can see here it's going to be perpendicular. So from the picture, we can see that cosine of theta, that the cosine of theta is going to be the magnitude of the projection divided by the magnitude of u, since it's a right triangle. We can solve for the projection. In addition, we can use our alternate dot product, because we do have the setup u and v and theta in the middle, so angle in between them. So therefore, these two will have to be equal. So let's set them equal to each other. So we can also see that both of these have u in the bottom. So if we multiply both sides by that amount, it cancels. And what we're left with is the magnitude of the projection.
So now to find the projection. Just in words, if we take the length of the projection and we times it by a unit vector in the same direction as V, we'll have our projection. So I think we can figure it out. So the length of the projection we just found, right here, and then a unit vector in the same direction as V. Well, let's look at our picture. So we can see here the projection lies on V. So we can take V and make it a unit vector. How do we do that? We normalize it. So we take V and we divide it by the magnitude of V. And so here's our equation. We can combine those, draw it one more time. And let's write also the length of our projection that we found above, which we wrote above. Just one small note. If we project U onto V, it is parallel to V. Okay, so those are parallel. Can you tell me what vector would be perpendicular to V? So it would be this one, but since we haven't labeled it, what can we label it? So again, remember tip to tail? So this is going the same direction. So this is tip to tail, and this is the resultant. So we can see if I add these two, the projections cancel and I get you. Whoops. Okay, we're gonna do an example with projection. So we want to turn this problem into vectors. Let's go ahead and draw it. So we'll call this point P. We can use this point. So there's PQ. And we want to find D. Well, we want to find the magnitude of D, the length of D. Since we have a formula for the projection, it would be easier to call D the projection of, if I make this go this way, that's the projection of PQ onto, well, I don't want to call that D, but if that's perpendicular, wouldn't that be called, that's going to be my normal to the line. So that distance D is going to be the magnitude of the projection from PQ, line PQ, we're going to project PQ right onto the normal. Those are the ones that are going in the same direction. This is the normal, this is the projection, and the distance of the projection is going to be my answer that I want, the distance from that point to the line. So the formula for this, so all we have to do is find these vectors. So the line, PQ, we need two points on it. There's our answer. Okay, one more example. So if we want to write th the vector 3, 4 as a linear combination of these two vectors, in terms of, we want to find a constant so that they'll add up to be 3, 4. So let's do this. Let's work on the right-hand side. That's alpha, alpha. So it gets distributed to both. And then you add term by term. And then let's equate components. Those have to be equal and these have to be equal. And of course, I mean, if you want, we can solve it using Kramer's or we can even just use algebra on this. Or we can put our linear algebra skills to the test. Find A. And since it's not equal to zero, we can use Kramer's. And 
And of course we get the same thing. You wanna check this answer, just so we can understand how to check it. Three, four is equal to, that's our answer. And our check. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.